In this tutorial, we're going to illustrate how to work with the function for the standard normal distributions. All right, the standard normal distribution means that the z or the mean is 0 and it has a standard deviation of 1. The Excel spreadsheets has the function that looks up the area or the percent of the data from the left-hand side of the curve all the way to some z value. It is exactly the same as the table that I gave out in the back of the book on the uh, on uploaded on Angel. Now, in this particular example, we're going to look up the area under the curve from the left-hand side all the way to where z is equal to 1 and 5 tenths. So in order to be able to do this, what we're going to do is we're going to go to the function that says norm.s.dist. We want to be able to find the area under the curve, the left-hand side, where z up to where z is equal to 1 and 5 tenths. So we go to our formulas, we go to more functions, we go to statistical, we go down to where it says norm.s.dist for distribution, and you see it says returns the standard normal distribution. For z, we input the score of 1 and 5 tenths you are going to put the logical value and you're going to put in true all the time for this particular situation. You notice the area under the curve comes up. We click on it and we're going to leave it to four decimal digits just like we have on our table. So that tells us the area from the left hand side up to where the relative standing is one and a half standard deviations above the mean. The norm dysfunction, where the norm means normal, the S stands for standard, and dis stands for distribution. And you use it the same way as the table in the back of the book, tells us that the area up to 1 and 5 tenths of a standard deviation above the mean is approximately 93% of the data. Now let's look at a different diagram. Now we want to look computing the area between two values on the normal curve. Notice the A is not above the left tail, B is below the right tail, and we want the area in the middle. For this situation, we're going to subtract the area from the left-hand tail from B, because when you're looking at B, we're looking at the area that starts at B and goes from the left tail all the way up to B. The left-hand tail that goes up to A is extra, so we want to be able to subtract it from that particular region. So for this one, we take the norm.est of B minus the norm.s.dist of A, and the area that we get left will be the area between regions A and B, the, right, the red area under the curve. So again, we're going to go to 3 and 5 tenths, we can go to formulas because we used it already. We can go to recently used. We go to norm.s. We click on the 3 and 5 tenths. Remember, we always type in true for our cumulative argument, and we get that number. Now, since negative 2 is right below, we can just copy that formula. And notice we have the norm.dist. We're using the negative 2. We get true. Now what we're going to find is the area between A and B. So we have to subtract the region because the area from the left-hand tail to B is almost 100% of the curve. The area from the left-hand tail to A is about a little bit more than 2% of the curve. So the red A region will be equal to the area for 3.5 standard deviations. Let's try that again. That's equal to the area for three and a half standard deviations minus the area for two standard deviations below the mean, which is 0 0.9770. If we want to change that to a percent, you can actually just copy this particular number and you change it to a percent. So it's approximately 97 and 7 tenths percent of the area under the curve. Now let's try a different type of picture, and this time we want the area to the extreme right-hand side. Now remember, the area we get goes from the left directly to this region. The entire area under the curve is 1 or 100%. Therefore, when we look up this area on the computer, 
using whatever the relative standing is for A, we have to subtract that from the 100% of the area under the curve just to get the area on the right-hand tail. So the formula looks like 1 minus norm dot s dot dist of 1 and 25 hundredths. Once again, we're going to look for this area under the curve. So we go to recently used. We have norm dot dist. We have 1 and 25 hundredths. Again, we type in the word true. And we get the area under the curve is 89 and 44 hundredths or 0.8944. So to get the area under the curve, we are going to take 1, remember it's a formula, minus the area that we just got, and therefore we have approximately 10 and 56 hundredths of 8%. Once again, I'm going to copy this particular formula, and it's becoming 8%, and I want that in percent notation. I'm going to make that a little bit darker. That's good. And again, this is the same answer you use when you have the table. Point of information, if you went to negative 1 and 25 hundredths because of the symmetry, you would have gotten exactly the same answer, and you will also see that on your table. All right, now you try it.